right, all right. How are we doing this morning, Kairos Church? Are we good? Are we alive? Are we awake? There better not be any coffee left for second service because I need you guys to drink it all and get woken up. And listen, too, I need you to take a donut home with you because if you don't, I've got to take it home. And, and donuts and skinny jeans, they're not really, they don't really hang out a whole lot. So please don't let me do that. <laughs> My name is Johnny. I'm, I'm unfortunately not Pastor Brent. He is a good looking man with a very good looking beard. Uh, I don't have one of those, uh, but I did do, yeah, I tried, y'all. This is a week. This is a week and a half. Uh, when, you know, when we first came to Kairos, I noticed everyone had these really nice beards. Number one, I didn't understand it because this is Florida. And so, you know, we get four days of winter and two and a half days of fall. So I don't understand why there's so many men with these huge, like, you know, jackets on their face. But hey, listen, that's, that's up to you. I get it. It's cool. Uh, I also tried to do a man bun, but you have to have a beard to do a man bun or else it's just a bun. Uh, you'll get that one on the drive home. That was my only dad joke of the day. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. So anyway, but, um, but we are excited. I'm excited to be here. Uh, Pastor Brent and his family are on uh, a staycation. They're kind of been in and out of town, but just resting. How many know that we are just around the corner from Christmas, right? The Christmas season. Uh, any, anybody, anybody have their tree up already? Not me. I, I, I refuse. But hey, there's some. I get it. It's a lot of work. So you want to get the most out of it. You know, I'll put mine up on December 23rd uh, and it'll be fine. So but no, uh, but I did. I wanted to do a few things today to help us not miss our pastor so much. So I'm going to preach in my hat because our pastor preaches in our hat. If you're new here, you, you may have never seen him, but he preaches in a hat. Again, he's got that, that beard that's so nice, and he, he preaches with his iced coffee. I didn't do that. I've got enough caffeine already because I'm so pumped today to be with you guys. Uh, but the thing that I could not do today was the beard, but I'm going to try my best. And next week, Pastor Brent's going to preach in skinny jeans, uh, and, and so you guys won't miss me. It's just going to be great. Uh, so... Uh, he, he probably won't, but we'll try. But again, we're so glad that you're here at Kairos Church. Uh, we're in the last week of our momentous series. It has been a journey uh, the last six weeks. Again, we started off, I know we've talked about how we started off celebrating one year of Kairos Church. How many are thankful for one year of Kairos Church, right? Amen, amen. So uh, we started off uh, just celebrating that, celebrating that what God has done on the journey so far. And today, we get to wrap it up together and close out this thing together. So as much as I want us to, uh, uh, to not miss Pastor Brent, and as much as I did to try to, to, try to help us uh, remember him, and I wore my hat, and I got my glasses, and all those things, there are a few things that I will do a little bit different. Is that okay? Is it okay if I just be Johnny B today? Is that cool? Because that's, that's all I know how to do. So, uh, but a little background about me that you may not know uh, is that I was born and raised in the South. Anybody from the South in here this morning? I'm not talking about Miami or Fort Lauderdale. I'm not talking about South Florida. I'm talking about like Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Not North Carolina. They don't count. They're too far north. Yeah. So roll tide, right? Amen. So, uh, but because of that, I had to get my one roll tide in today. Y'all, y'all still love me. I know we're in gator country, uh, but still love me today. But, um, but so there is, uh, so since I'm from the South, uh, so the last 10 years, what I've really been trying to do is get rid of my Southern accent, because I used to be real Southern, you know? I grew up, uh, we, we, we owned 111 acres of land, and we went hunting and fishing and all that stuff, but when I get around my family, my Southern accent decides it wants to creep up, and we'll start talking about grits and tomatoes and potatoes, and that's tomatoes and potatoes if you, if you totally missed that, uh, but my wife, she's Hispanic, so when she gets around her family, they speak a whole nother language. And I'm like, hey, listen, give me some credit here if I slip back into my accent. But because I was raised in the South, uh, we are loud people, y'all. Uh, th th we aren't quiet in the South. We're real loud. So today, the first thing I want to do is I want to give you permission to be loud. Uh, you don't have to be quiet. You don't have to be shy. You have permission to be loud. It'll help me feel more comfortable. Amen? Amen. And the second, yeah, amen, there we go. The second thing that we do in the South is most people are still able to go knock on their neighbor's door and ask for some bread or some sugar. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so what I want us to do today, I want us to do a little, uh, have a little fun. I want you to look at one of your neighbors, just pick one, 
Just pick, it, pick, it, pick the nicest looking neighbor today and say, hey, neighbor, that's good preaching. All right, so you obviously picked the wrong neighbor because that wasn't good enough. Let's look at the other neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor, that's good preaching. All right, we're going to have some fun today. Hey, listen, let's pray together, and we're going to jump in today to our last week of momentous series. God, we just thank you so much, God. Father, I am fully aware that today there is different stories in this room. There's different levels of life that we're on our own journey. God, some of us are in the middle of our journey, some of us at the very beginning, God. But I believe this. I believe that your word meets us right where we are. God, your word meets us in the middle of our situation, no matter what life looks like today, God. So let your word meet us today, God. Let, let my words be your words, God. Let the next few moments that we spend together be impactful, God. Let life change happen in this room today through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to talk today. Today is Momentous Action. It's our last week. And we're going to talk a little bit today about a, a man named Peter. So Peter is a real popular guy in the Bible. Maybe you've heard of him. But anybody in here, you watch the show, This Is Us. Me neither. I don't watch it and cry. I don't. I, don't. I really don't. I don't watch it by myself. What are you saying? Stop talking to me. I'm kidding. No. Uh, so, okay, in the show This Is Us, they have like this, they do a lot of flashbacks. Have you ever watched a show with flashbacks? It's kind of like that. So they'll, they'll be experiencing something as an adult and then they'll flash back to when they were kids and it like somehow it all makes sense. So today, as we read this, this scripture, as we talk about Peter, we're going to do some flashbacks because how many know that they ha there has to be content to our context today, right? So there's got to be some content to our context. And that's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the part where you say, neighbor, that's good preaching. Whichever one was the nice neighbor, you can, you can pick. That's on you to decide who that is. So we're going to go, we're going to flashback to today here and there as we talk about Peter. But I want us to dive into scripture today. It should be on your screens for you. It comes out of Matthew Chapter 14, verse 22, let's dive in to God's word. As soon as the meal was finished, he, being Jesus, insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone late into the night. Verse 24. Meanwhile, the boat was far out to sea and the wind came up against them and they were battered by the waves. At four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. They were scared out of their wits. They said, a ghost crying out in terror. Can we pause right there? Listen, we just got through Halloween and my wife and I, we tried to watch some scary movies with some ghosts and we could not do it, right? We tried, we went back to Rugrats, or like the Rugrats holiday special because that's all that we could, that, that was our cup of tea. So I can just imagine in this moment what they're seeing, what they're feeling, right? A ghost. Let's dive back in to verse 27. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage or be of courage. It's me. Don't be afraid. Peter suddenly bold said, Master, if it's really you, Call to me to come onto the water. He said, come ahead. Now, here's what we need to learn today. We're going to do one of our flashbacks. Before this moment, before we, Peter and Jesus are having this moment, right? And what's important for us to understand is that Peter already, already knows that Jesus is bad to the bone, okay? Because the first scripture that we read, it started off, it said, as soon as the meal was finished. See, what's important to know is they had just left this scene where Jesus fed the multitudes with the, with the five loaves and the two fish, right? So Peter had seen Jesus do impossible things. So to, to Peter, Jesus wasn't just an average Joe. He knew, hey, if this is Jesus and walking on the water, like this is, this is a guy who can do some really incredible things. So it's important to know today that Peter knew that Jesus was a pretty cool guy and that Jesus could do some pretty cool things. I mean, after all, he just took a little bit of food and made like a golden corral level buffet for these people. And they had just seen that. It's fresh on Peter's mind. He knows that Jesus is bad to the bone. He can do incredible, incredible things. So here's what I want us to, our first point today I want us to look at is number one is this. I believe God can do it, but can he do it for me? Look at the nice neighbor and say, I believe God can do it, 
but can he do it for me? See, church, it's important for us this morning to realize that, that Peter, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a matter of believing that Jesus could do this impossible thing. Peter's about to step out of this boat, out of this comfort zone onto the water. Peter's about to take a step of momentous action. And, and there's really no reason to doubt because he just had witnessed Jesus do this incredible thing. I wonder t- today, church, how many times have we seen God do things in other people's life, but we still doubt and we still lack faith in our own life for God to do it for us? How many times do we look at someone else's miracle, someone else's moment, and we're like, man, that's awesome. Like, I'm so glad that your life is together. I'm so glad that church is working for you. But when it comes to our own life, we lack faith. And that's where Peter was. Peter was having this moment where it wasn't, it wasn't that he didn't believe that Jesus could do something impossible. It was that he wasn't so sure he could do something impossible for him. I wonder this morning, what is it in our life? What is it in our life that's got us distracted? Listen, I've got a two-year-old and a four-month-old, and if you can sleep through the night in my house, it is a treasure. It is incre- talk about impossible things. Talk about Jesus doing impossible things. If you can sleep through the night in my house, it's, it's a big deal. So I wonder this morning, what is the distraction in your life that's got you tripped up that maybe has you believing, yeah, yeah, God can do it for someone else, but I'm not so sure he can do it for me. I, I know that maybe God was able to meet your financial need, but when it comes to my financial need, I just, I don't have the faith. I know that maybe God was able to bring your family back together, but when it comes to believing God to bring my family back together, I, I just don't know. I just don't know if I've got the faith to do it. I just don't know if I've got the faith to believe God for my own life. When it comes to taking momentous action in my own life. We're going to do another flashback. See, it's important this morning also for us to realize what kind of friends that Jesus and Peter were. Because, you know, Jesus had, he had, he had 12 disciples, but they, they, he had a few, what I like to call his faithful few, that were, that were his inner circle. And so it's important for us this morning to realize what kind of friends that Peter and Jesus were. There's, there's a, a story in the Bible, and I'm just going to paraphrase it for us this morning, there's, there's a dialogue that takes place between Peter and Jesus, and it kind of goes down like this. Jesus walks up to Peter and says, hey, Peter, listen, man, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? I, you know, and so Peter starts answering uh, his question really with other questions. And he says, well, you know, this person says that you're this, and this person, he says that you're that. And, I, and the word on the street, Jesus, is that you're this. And, and you know, at my school, people say that you're this. And at my job, I've heard this. You know, in the, in the break room, uh, you know, I've heard this about who you really are. And, and Jesus stops Peter. He said, no, man, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered in that moment. He said, you are the Messiah. You are the Son of of God. Our second point today is this. When we confirm the Lord, the Lord affirms us. That's, look at whatever neighbor was the nicest to you, whatever neighbor shared their donut with you this morning. <laughs> when we confirm the Lord, he affirms us. What's so important to realize here in this moment is that when it comes to taking a step of momentous action, when it comes to taking a step of faith. We have to realize we need to know who we are in Christ. Now, maybe today is your, is your, is your first time in church. Or maybe you've been in church for so long, there's a gold star by your name, okay? But what's important for us to know today when it comes to us getting ready to take a step of momentous faith and momentous action is who are you? Who are you in Christ? Who does Jesus say that you are? Because when Peter, when Peter answered Jesus, something happened there. Peter said, you're the Messiah, you're the son of God. And in that moment, Jesus' reply to Peter was, upon this rock, I'll build my church. See, something happened when Peter began to acknowledge who Jesus was. Jesus began to tell Peter who he was. That's why worship is so important. And I'm the worship guy, so of course I'm going to throw that in there once or twice. Uh, By the way, can we give it up for our worship team this morning? Uh, They're so awesome. They must have a really great leader. I don't know who that is. Uh, But anyway, so that's why worship is so important. It's our opportunity to begin to tell God who he is. It's it's our opportunity 
opportunity to begin to declare who God is, that God is good, that God is for us, not against us, that he'll do it again, that he's faithful, all of these things. Today, we even lifted up the name of Jesus. It's important to do that because when we do, Jesus can then walk into the scene and begin to tell us who we are. I know there's moments, there's days when I wake up church where I just don't feel like getting out of the bed. Anybody been, on, been, been there by, by myself today? Listen, on those days when I forget for a moment who I am, there's no way I'm going to be able to take a step of momentous action. On the days that I forget, church, who God has called me to be, it's hard to take a step of momentous action. But when we remember who we are in Christ, when we remember who Christ is in us, something happens. Something happens. The Bible calls it a, me- a mustard seed of faith. And now today, if, if you're a believer or you're not a believer or you're still figuring this whole Jesus thing out, wh- whatever level of life you're in, there is a measure of faith given to every person this morning. A measure of faith. And I like to believe that when we begin to understand who we are in Christ, that mustard seed begins to grow. And there's nothing more dangerous, there's nothing more crazy than a believer who knows who they are in Christ. Listen, boldness is a powerful thing when it comes to stepping in to your calling, stepping into that moment of momentous action. You know, I, I grew up in a, in a real uh, southern church, and we were real strict, you know, uh, my mom wasn't able to cut her hair until last week, so, you know, if you know what I'm talking about. No, I'm kidding, but, um, but I was raised, and it took me a while to, to what I like to call reverse my stinking thinking. Anybody ever had some stinking thinking? Uh, my wife will tell you that all my thinking is stinking, but, but I, it took me a minute to realize this, that God's love for us is not based on our conduct. You can tweet that, you can Snapchat that, whatever you want to do with that. God's love for you, church, God's love for you today, friend, is not based on your conduct. You can have the best day of your life. You can have the worst day of your life. But God's love for you is not going to change. His love isn't based on your conduct. His love is based on his character. Okay? And so it's important to remember that on the days when we can't get out of the bed, when that, those days when, when maybe we go to make the pot of coffee. This happened to me this week, so I know. You go to make the coffee and it's gone, okay? And you're like, man, I don't want to pay $6 for Starbucks today. What am I going to do? You know, you, you, those days where it's hard to get going and it's, it, you, don't even, you can't even begin to think about how you're going to take steps of momentous action that day. It's important to remember and to start with that simple truth that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. And that when we begin to realize that and begin to to feel the power of that, that faith begins to rise up in us. Amen? Amen? Faith begins to rise up in us. Oftentimes, we think our challenges come to identify us in the storm. When in reality, when challenges come, Jesus is identifying us I'm going to say that again. Oftentimes, we think our challenges come to help us identify Jesus in the storm. But in reality, when challenges come, Jesus is identifying us. Who are you in the storm? Who are we today? When, when, the, when the going gets tough, when, when life is crazy, it's, it's easy. You know, it would have been easy for Peter to pick his moment on the day when it was like 85 degrees you know, like it's the middle of May, you know, he's at Cocoa Beach or Clearwater, whatever beach you go to. And he's like, yeah, today's the day I'm going to walk on water. Like forecast is clear, right? But it was the storm. Who was he in that storm, in that moment of storm? Again, we've already kind of talked about how he knew that Jesus could do miracles, but when it came to doing something for him, he began to doubt. Now, I want to give, I want to give Peter some credit today because there was 11 other guys in the boat that didn't do anything. They just kind of chilled out, right? They were probably like, I don't know. What do you do when you fish? I don't know. Clean your hook. I don't know what you do, uh, but I don't know. But I, I, I've watched Finding Nemo and Finding Nori, but that's about as far as it goes for me. But it's important to realize that according to history, other than Jesus, Peter is the only person to ever walk on water. Now, maybe he didn't make it very far, but he made it farther than me. And I'm almost willing to bet he made it further than any of us in this room who have ever tried to walk on water. If you've ever walked on water, please, I want to hear all about it. I think it'd be really cool. But, uh, but it's important to realize that today. Who are we in the storm? When challenges come, it's easy 
to, to take steps of momentous action. It's, it's easy to uh, have faith in moments where everything is right. But in moments where there's distractions, where there's winds, where there's storms, that's when we begin to doubt. Even when we've just seen Jesus do something impossible. Even when we've just seen Jesus tell us who we are. He said, man, if Jesus told me, Johnny, upon this rock I'll build my church, whoo, let me tell you, I would have some confidence about myself. I would, I would have some swag. You know what I mean? If Jesus said that to me, but still in this moment, because of distractions, because of life, whatever that is in your life, if it's work or stress or kids or, or, what, or school or whatever it is today in your life that's causing the winds and the storm in your life, in that moment, it's difficult to take a step of momentous action. But when we, again, begin to declare who God is in our life, that's why, again, worship is so important in church, whether it's in your car, whether it's in your headphones, however you, however you do it, however you get in God's presence each week, it's important because your altitude will affect your attitude. And what I mean by that is if, if, if you, come on, that's, that's a snap, is anybody Snapchat? I don't know. That's good. All right. We'll make it, you're getting louder. I'm okay with that. That's cool. Uh, well, roll tide, right? Okay. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but it's important. Listen, I know there's moments in our house where both kids are crying and I'm crying because they're crying. I'm not really crying, but I want to cry. And my wife, who is Latina, is talking a whole other language. Like, I'm like, what are you, what are you saying? Like, are you ordering burritos? I don't know what's happening. You know, like, no, I'm kidding. But I mean, she's just, no, 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 no. You know how, is anybody in this room Latina or, or speaks Spanish? Okay, you know when it, when it gets in fuego, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, moments happen. And so we're all going crazy, and I'll just pick up the remote, and I'll flip on YouTube, and I'll turn on some worship, and I'll just let worship begin to play in the house in the background. And it, it may take a few minutes. It may, it may take a, a, a moment, but somehow or another, the, the atmosphere in the room just begins to change because worship is that powerful. So I want to challenge you today, if it's hard for you to, to begin to rise up and begin to let that mustard seed of faith begin to grow, to get you to a point where you're ready to take a step of faith out of the boat, out of the comfort zone, and to the waves, I challenge you today, begin to change the atmosphere around you. I challenge you to do that. Begin to change. I love country music, but sometimes country music, it's, oh, listen, my wife left me, my dog left me, my truck broke down, you know, like, <laughs> That's not getting me, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I love it. Listen, y'all, Tim McGraw, you know, I love it. I, I've seen him live. It was awesome. His jeans are tighter than mine. It was wild. It was just crazy. <laughs> I almost wore a cowboy hat today because I love country music. You wouldn't know that probably by looking at me. But what I'm saying is when I need to change my atmosphere, I know how to do it. When I have a day where there's just no way I'm going to be able to take that step of momentous action that God is calling me to take, I begin to change my atmosphere. When I begin to, there's that song that we sing, I am chosen, not forsaken. There's power in that. When we begin to say those things about who God says that we are, all of a sudden faith rises up in us. All of a sudden the winds don't seem so crazy and all of a sudden the distractions begin to fade away and we can take a step. We can remember, hey, Listen, this is the same dude that I just saw feed all these people with nothing. All these people with nothing. He just did that. We just saw that before we took this trip on this boat. And when we begin to declare who Jesus is and remember who he is, faith begins to rise up in us. And those distractions aren't what they were in the beginning. We begin to remember, man, he's the same God who did it yesterday. He's the same God to now, today, and forever. He's not going to change. He's not going to change. My hairstyle is going to change. The color won't. It's gray. It's, it's done. <laughs> but Jesus is not going to change. Amen. It's important for us to know that. It's important for us to get into an atmosphere where we can begin to declare the good things of God and in turn begin to remember the good things God has said about us. On those days where we don't feel chosen, we have to remember that we are chosen. God's love isn't based on our conduct. It's based on his character. Number three this morning is this. No matter how many times you've said no, you can still say yes. No matter how many times you said, no, nah, I can't do it. 
No matter how many times that the Lord has knocked on your door and said, hey, it, it, maybe it's time for you to stop just attending church and begin to serve. Or maybe it's time for, uh, for you to, to, uh, to st- take a step into, into greater ministry. Or, or maybe it's, it's, it's time for you to chase some dream that everyone else told you was crazy. Amen? No matter how many times you've said no this morning, you can still say yes. I remember a moment in my life I was working for this large church. I was young. My hair was black. I thought it was so cool. I was like Tom Cruise in Top Gun. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was cool, right? And I was working for this big church, and, uh, you know, their, their staff was three or 400 people, just their staff. And uh, I remember that we were on uh, the road, and we, we came back, and they brought us in for this meeting, and they said, hey, we got enough worship leaders. We, we're good. We don't, we don't need you. We're good, you know, we're, we're basically like, we're absorbing your department. Like, you know, we were leading worship for the, the, the college, you know, kids, and they said, oh, well, we can have the same guy lead worship for, for high school and college, we don't need you. And I got in my car, and I was in Ohio, and I began to drive home to Atlanta, where I'm from, and I was ready just to give up. I remember the moment I was by myself in my 96 Pontiac, and that thing was awesome. It really was, and it was my grandma's, but I remember I was in that car, <laughs> And I just begin to cry out to God. Anybody ever had a moment where you just, by yourself, and the tears just start to flow? It's you and Jesus. That moment where you don't care about looking cool. You don't care if, it's, if you're saying the right things. You don't even know what the right thing is to say. But you just have this vulnerable moment with God. I begin to cry out to God. I said, God, I'm done. I'm done. They said I'm done. I'm done. And as clear as I've ever heard the Lord speak, he said this. He says, you're not done till I say you're done. And in that moment, I had to choose to say yes when I wanted to say no. I wonder how many people in this room this morning have said no to momentous action, to taking a leap of faith. Y'all, the boat is so comfortable. We live in the chain of lakes. Everybody's got these nice boats, right? Some of them are probably more expensive than my car. And I got a new car, and they're still, you know, they, they come with everything. You can sleep in your boat. You can take a vacation on your boat. The boat is comfortable but the greater things the greater things aren't so comfortable sometimes I wonder this morning how many times we've said no in a moment of fear I wonder how many times we've said no in a moment of doubt we thought man I'm not good enough that's not me God you got the wrong guy it's not me this morning God wants to challenge us to say yes there's three things today I believe God wants to challenge us with Will you move despite what it looks like? Again, that was not the right, listen, if there was any moment to walk on water, it wasn't during a storm. If there's any moment for you to get out of your boat and out of your comfort zone, I'm here to tell you, my friend, it's probably not going to happen when it's easy. God's probably not going to call you to do something new when it's easy. Chances are he's going to knock on your door when everything feels good. And he's going to say, you've done this. This is good. Now let's go a little farther. Let's go on to something new. Let's, let's take another step of faith. You did, you did well. Now there's something else I want you to do. There's something new that I want you to do. I want you to take a, another step of momentous action. Will you move despite what it looks like? Will you move even when others stay still? Now maybe this morning you had plans to come with your whole family, your whole crew. And maybe you're the only one that came today. Will you continue to say yes when others don't? Will you continue to say yes to those dreams when people tell you no? I, I'll never forget that moment when, when I thought I was done because somebody told me I was done. This is, this is 10 years ago. I think about the things I've done in the last 10 years that would have never happened if I would have said no that day. If I would have listened to somebody else's opinion of me. Will you say yes? Will you move even when others stay still. Will you move now? The past is gone. God is calling you now. It's all about now. The very name of our church means moments. You're in a moment now. There's no greater moment. There's no better moment than now. Can we stand together today, church? Now, I'm, I'm the son of a preacher. My dad was a preacher. and 
his dad was in ministry and I never wanted to do anything like this. I, give me a guitar and some cool boots and I, I'll sing to Jesus. I'll do that all day. But this morning, this morning, God is calling us to momentous action. Momentous action this morning. No matter how many times you've said no, will you say Yes, can we close our eyes this morning? There's two calls to action that I believe God wants to call us to today. The first one is this. If you've never said yes to Jesus, today is your moment to stay. The journey's got to start somewhere. And listen, maybe you've even said no when it comes to a relationship with Jesus. Maybe it just seemed uh, too hard or, or, or just something that you're, you weren't ready for, you know. But today is your moment to stay to say yes to Jesus. That's the most important step of momentous action you could ever take. Number two, is God calling you into greater purpose to do more, to chase that dream, fulfill that call he's placed on your life? Today is your momentous day. Let's close our eyes today, church. We're gonna pray together. Maybe you've been in church before and they've asked you to close your eyes and you thought that was just strange, but what that does, I believe, is, is it creates a moment with you and God that's it's not about anybody else. Same reason we ask you to lift your hands in worship. It's something about you and God that, that nobody can take away from you, that nobody can do for you, right? This morning, if, 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 that was, if the first call was you, nobody's looking around, nobody's gonna uh, give you a funny look, but if that was you today and you wanna make a step of own minutes action by saying yes to Jesus for the first time or coming back to Jesus, would you just slip up your hand really quick? We just wanna pray with you and for you, amen. Second call is this, if you're ready to take a step of momentous action, if you feel God pounding on the door of your heart to do something new, trust me today, church, when I say, I know how good the boat can feel, but is God calling you? Is God speaking to you today to take a step of momentous action? If that's you, would you just slip up your hand? We're going to pray. I'm going to raise my hand today. I'll be the first. God is calling us to greater. He's calling us to a new thing. The new thing isn't familiar, but it's, it's still God. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you today, Lord, that you're calling us out onto the water. God, I thank you that today, Lord, that, that you don't always pick those times that feel the best. You're not going to pick the, the day where, where it's sunny and blue skies. You're going to pick those moments where maybe it's not the easiest. And you're going to call us out. This morning, I believe we saw some hands go up, but I believe there's even more in this room that if they were honest with themselves, if we were honest with ourselves, we know that there is greater for us, God. You're, you're the God who goes from glory to glory. You don't stay still. You don't go backwards. You don't go in reverse. You go forward. So this morning, wherever we're at in our life, I believe there is a call to momentous action to take a step forward. So we say yes. I believe this morning, church, there's power in the word, yes. So under your breath in your heart to the Lord, would you just say yes? We say yes this morning to momentous action, whatever you're calling us. Father, we can't go back to the beginning. And we don't know what tomorrow looks like. But in this moment is where you promised to be. 